Well, hello, CBC. I don't know if anyone is out there or not. This is something new that we're trying. Um, obviously, these are unique times, and so we're trying some unique things to try to keep uh, our congregation uh, informed and unified during this time, trying to honor the limits of social gatherings. Uh, we feel like there is some wisdom there, and so and doing that, we're trying to use as much technology as we can to, to keep everyone informed. And so, again, um, this is an opportunity for us to try to stay informed. And our goal, or at least my goal at this point, is to try to have an update and a devotional each uh, night about 516. And so um, we'll see how this goes. This is something new for me and um, maybe new for you as well. But uh, any comments or input you have would be helpful but um again it looks like a few people are joining which is pretty cool um i guess it is now 5 16 and so um tonight i just wanted to sort of remind our church of our desire to be a 5 16 church uh, built on a 3 16 foundation and so um in that regard, I think regardless of whether we're able to meet as a large gathering or not, we can still be the church. In fact, uh, the early church met house to house and in smaller gatherings and did not have the opportunity uh, to meet on a large scale. And so in many ways, we may have to uh, learn uh, some different ways to meet and to encourage each other during this time. But again, uh, we are a 516 church built on a 316 foundation. What does that mean? The 316 foundation is John 316. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so again, the gospel is at the core of everything we do. And in 1 John 316, by this we know love that Christ died for us and or laid down his life for us. And so we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. And again, the emphasis not only on the love of Christ for us, but then our love for one another modeled after Christ. And then finally, 2 Timothy 3.16, uh, for all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped in every good work. And so our desire as a church, our foundation is to be community Bible church, a community um, of believers grounded on the word of God, the Bible, and set apart by the gospel, a church of Jesus Christ. But one of the key things we do at, uh, is try to emphasize being a 516 church, which I think is a good description of a healthy spiritual life. And so those 516s, I think, are good applications for us during this time. Um, and so the first one is confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And so I would encourage you during this time to uh, take this time where we may have a little bit more time um, to uh, be on our own, to somewhat have a sabbatical to some sense. Of course, if you're in the healthcare field, uh, that's certainly not true. But um, as we're set apart during this time, I would say take this time to pray. I just got off a conference call with some pastors for our with our governor, John Bell Edwards, and the first thing he asked for was for prayer. And so I know sometimes... Um, we don't see the tangible results of prayer, um, but we know that when we pray, there are spiritual uh, battles and forces that are at work. And so we engage in that battle through prayer. And so I would encourage you to pray for our president, pray for our governor, pray for our local leaders, that they would have wisdom. In fact, Governor Edwards' request was that he would have the wisdom to know what to do and the courage to do it. And I think that is a pretty good prayer request. Secondly, uh, Galatians 5.16, I say then walk fulfill the lust of the flesh, that during this time to ask God to uh, fill you with the Spirit, that you could walk in wisdom and know how to best uh, use this time for His glory. Uh, the third one uh, is um, 1 Thessalonians 5.16-18, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And so even in this opportunity, we can give thanks. Um, we don't quite know uh, where things are headed, but God certainly has our attention. It's interesting to me that we've been praying for a revival in many ways, and um, if God was going to get our attention, he certainly has done that. Uh, he's sort of isolated us 
um, remove some distractions. There's no sports on TV. Um, and so this is an opportunity for us to uh, refocus on God and to pray for our nation that this would get the attention of our nation. And maybe, just maybe, it would bring together some of the division of Republicans and Democrats and remind us of the fact that we are to be one nation under God. And that's when we are unified, when we're um, under his uh, authority and submitted to him and recognizing our dependency. Uh, the fourth uh, verse, um, I'm trying to remember which ones I've done. First Thessalonians 5, Galatians 5, oh, Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And I think this is an opportunity for us to bless our neighbors and to minister to them. Um, just going next door and saying, is everything okay? Is there any way I can help? And particularly if you have um, elderly or those who are more vulnerable at this time who might be afraid to venture out or shouldn't venture out, this would be a great opportunity to check on them and to bless them. And oftentimes we don't even know our neighbors and this could be a great opportunity uh, to get to know them and, and to find out how you can minister to them or help them at this time. But the last 516 I wanted to emphasize tonight and um, would be Ephesians 516. And I just wanted to read that, that full context of Ephesians 516 and talk about it a little bit. And then uh, I may try to answer some of the comments that are coming up and um, on the side as well. But uh, the 516, uh, Ephesians 516 is redeeming the time because the days are evil. And I thought that's a pretty appropriate reminder um, for tonight for today and this time um, to make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil is how the NIV puts it. But I wanted to read the full context. It says this, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. And I was looking at that, redeeming the time because the days are evil, and I've always sort of put that in the context that we live in an evil world and it's difficult to, to know how to live, and so therefore to redeem the time. But I looked up that word uh, evil. You can go to blueletterbible.org and uh, uh, type it in, and you'll see that it's a word, uh, pano, panoros, Poneros, I think is how you pronounce it in Greek. And I looked up the definition. It's a little bit more than just evil. Actually, the first definition is it means full of difficulties, annoyances, or hardships. Obviously, that can also be the second uh, aspect of that is bad or of a bad nature or condition. But I thought about that. If we were to translate it, um, make the most of every opportunity because the days are full of difficulties, annoyances, and hardships, uh, it certainly would apply in this um, particular time. And so we are to redeem the time, make the most, be wise uh, in our decisions, is what he says. Walk circumspectly, be wise in the things we do. I think uh, exercising wisdom this time makes a lot of sense. Uh, make the most of every opportunity, see this as an opportunity. In fact, I would say uh, every difficulty is an opportunity for ministry. It's an opportunity for dependency, dependency on God, but it's also an opportunity for ministry. And uh, this, this may be just like the floods of 2016, an opportunity for ministry in ways that we've never seen as a church. And I pray that that is the case. And uh, then the third thing is just to pray to be filled with spirit. The way to make the most of the opportunity is to be filled with his spirit. And so I would encourage you at this time to wake up every morning and say, um, Spirit of God, fill me uh, every ounce of my being and uh, give me wisdom to know how to live at this present time and to make the most of every opportunity because the days are full of difficulties, annoyances, and hardships, and I want to honor you. And what does filling with the Spirit looks like? Well, it looks like singing songs of praise to Him in our hearts and out loud. Um, this is a great time probably to sing some praise. Uh, giving thanks again, recognizing that even in this situation, there are ways that God can work that we may not have anticipated and thirdly, submitting to one another in the fear of God, uh, finding ways to encourage our relationships and our neighbors. And so anyway, that's a, just a devotional thought for tonight. And uh, again, our desire is to 
try to connect each evening at uh, 516. And if you have questions or comments or thoughts, you're welcome to uh, mention those. Um, but again, at this point, as a church, uh, we are not doing a live in-person service on March 22nd and 29th, but are going to do a live online service at those times at 9 o'clock. And so I encourage you uh, to tune in. We'll be on uh, cbcla.sermon.net and on Facebook Live is our plan. And uh, plan to have a, a service that's where we're connected via uh, technology. And so hope you can join us for that. And then other activities have been uh, put on hold for this time. And we are just trying to um, pray and, uh, again, honor the the directives which we believe are a way to uh, limit the uh, vulnerability of people in our congregation and in our community and so we're trying to do that and so we encourage you to do that as well um, i don't uh, know if there's any questions out there but you're like i said free to ask them and we'll try to respond to them uh, maybe tomorrow night in fact my thought tomorrow night is to cover um, a question that someone asked me recently are we living in the last days and i thought well um, that would, might be a good topic to cover and how we're supposed to live even in light of that and the fact that Christ is coming back. So anyway, hopefully this has been encouraging to you. And um, just know that we as elders are praying for our congregation. And if there are any particular needs that you have, please uh, let us know. But we love you. And uh, like I said, we'll try to keep in contact as much as we can. And uh, that will be it for tonight. And uh, we'll sign in again tomorrow night around 516 and would love to have you there. Thanks so much, CBC.